In his compelling documentary, Weed. You've looked at the evidence. There is real science now out there. He was flat out wrong about weed. A year long journey that changed what many of us thought about marijuana, myself included. I think, you know, we've been terribly and systematically misled. We used to only picture this. Then we showed you this. Medical marijuana treating seizures, pain, dozens of other ailments. Charlotte's doing amazing, just better and better each month. But we learned this wasn't the end of the story. It was just the beginning. I think we went from about 150 calls a month to over 4,000. There are still so many issues to be addressed. The federal government says marijuana is among the most addictive drugs with no medicinal value. Many serious scientists say they're wrong. It's a medicine. It's the politics of pot, pitting policy against patients. Trapped in the middle, sick, qualified people who want medical marijuana but can't get it because it's illegal. If you try to go back to Ohio with Jordan's medication, we'll be arrested. All for a plant that you're going to see can work wonders for pain in a grown man, MS in a woman at the peak of her life, and seizures in a little girl. We traveled the globe asking scientists, patients, and policymakers for a solution. I'm Dr. Sanjay Gupta, and this is Weed 2 Cannabis Madness. This time, our journey begins in New Jersey, ironically called the Garden State. It's the summer of 2013, a quiet neighborhood diner about to become the site of a headline-making confrontation. Between a frantic father, Brian Wilson, and the outspoken governor, Chris Christie, all over Wilson's two-year-old daughter, Vivian. I was wondering what the hold of this. It's been like two months now, or a month and a half. It's a very well documented. Me, these are complicated. These are complicated issues. It's a very simple I know, issue. Listen, no, I know you think it's simple. It, it's not. it was a David and Goliath moment. You've got a governor who's one of the leading Republicans in the nation, and this dad who's got a little girl who he's desperately worried and in love with, who just wants to do the best thing for her. You see, Brian Wilson's daughter Vivian was dying. Her brain continuously locked in seizures, and nothing had worked. The Wilsons were now pinning their hopes on medical marijuana. They'd read about marijuana on the internet, and they saw stories about it saving lives. Like little Charlotte Figgy, whose story was told in our first documentary, Weed. I remember I was actually at the gym on the treadmill, and I saw a preview. I was watching the TV. I was so excited, because I knew that everything was going to change at that moment. They hoped marijuana would rescue Vivian from the virtual prison she lives in, where bright lights, loud sounds, and patterns can all induce a seizure. That's why she wears that patch on her eye. I say if he could be blindfolded, she'd be seizure-free because <laughs> it's everything. It's all visual stimuli. She can't leave the house. Vivian, do you know this book? Vivian and I first played together in her darkened, quiet, very controlled bedroom. It quickly became clear how tremendous a toll this isolation takes on Vivian. But also the entire family. No one here has a normal life, including Vivian's older sister, four-year-old Adele. Like every day on the way home from school, she's like, can we stop at the park? And I'm like, we can't stop at the park because Vivian's nurse leaves at five and we have to be home. What, what would Adele say about that? She'll say, we can't. When we pass the park, she says, those kids are at the park, but we can't go to the park because Vivian has seizures. And it, like, kills you, you know? They're so severely affected. New York University neurologist Dr. Oren Davinsky is Vivian's doctor. He's also one of the world's leading epilepsy experts. I think for the families who have given Western medicine a really good chance, and there are a lot of them, and, and Western medicine has failed their children. But the Wilsons now found themselves in the political crossfire of pot. Marijuana was legalized for medicinal use here in New Jersey right before Christie took office in January of 2010. It was done by his Democratic predecessor. But once in office, Christie blocked the legislation for more than a year. He eventually signed one of the strictest, most limiting medical marijuana bills to date. Just six approved stores in the entire state and perhaps most damaging for Vivian, 
No edible forms of marijuana allowed, which was crucial. The only option then for this two-year-old would be to inhale it. Talk to Brian Wilson. Protests erupted across the state. And that's why Brian Wilson took things into his own hands that day in August. We've had our experts be judging. Have you heard I've, from our doctors? I have read everything that's been put in front of me. In it became known as the dust-up in the diner. I mean, it was all over CNN. It was national news. It was like Libya, Vivian Wilson's father on the CNN home. I mean, it was crazy. She's the one my daughter died, Governor. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Good to see you. It's a battle these families understand better than anyone. There's no hope left in Miami. There's nothing, there was nothing else to do. Each of these families wanted medical marijuana for their sick children. They also fought to get it in their home states, but lost. So they moved to Colorado where it's legal. Desperate and determined, they've become known as medical marijuana refugees. I came from Arizona. We've left a lot back in Alabama. Unfortunately, we had to break the news to his folks that we're not gonna be coming back to Texas. More than 100 families moving to get the marijuana they had seen in our last documentary. It's called Charlotte's Web, named for the little girl we profiled. It's a plant that doesn't get you high, but is loaded with a chemical called cannabidiol, or CBD, which seems to help reduce seizures, even when nothing else has worked. It changed Charlotte's life. Because the drier it is, it'll extract more. Thousands of parents call to ask the growers, Josh Stanley and his brothers, if it could possibly work for their children. And you tell them, potentially, it could. Nothing's for sure. And I said, well, unfortunately, you have to move to Colorado. And the reason they have to move to Colorado is what? Because anything that's grown in Colorado has to stay in Colorado. It's the most absurd idea that we would have to do this to get medicine. But it's the law. Marijuana is illegal federally. So even if you're prescribed it legally in a medical marijuana state, even if it works, even if it is your last hope, you're out of luck. You can't carry it across state lines. So for the Wilsons, completely uprooting their lives and moving seemed to be the only option to help Vivian. It's the hardest thing in the world to have to do. We have all of our family here. Um, you know, we have our job. There's so much that we'd have to do. But just weeks after the dust up in the diner, just around the time the Wilsons allowed us to start filming their story exclusively, we received word that Governor Christie had eased his stance. Madam Speaker, Senate Bill 2842 has received 70 votes in affirmative, one in the negative. Before... Eventually, the state of New Jersey did allow the edible form of marijuana after all. But the Wilsons still had another roadblock. They couldn't get their doctors to prescribe it. There's a certain level within the epilepsy community of just fear that you could do more harm than good, and until you go through the standard process, you should be conservative. And by standard process, he means scientific research. And as you're about to learn, that is nearly impossible to conduct here in the United States. It's time to reform the system. I love you so much. Have fun on the airplane. Leaving people like the Wilsons in a painful and potentially deadly limbo. The exclusive journey to save their daughter when we come back. It's high noon at the Indispensary in Colorado Springs. Business is booming at one of the state's largest medical marijuana dispensaries. Customers run the gamut of ages and ailments. Busy day. It's always a busy day, yes, sir. Each strain, a different high. Each bud, a different benefit. Each leaf, treating a different ailment. Everything from mental floss to AK-47 to green crack. <laughs> exactly, to the green green. names. Did you name any of these? No. 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 The names are quirky, but the owner says this is serious medicine. How hard is this to do? Good luck. Good tough, luck. Huh? It's tough. Um, it requires um, persistence, patience, and luck. This is Josh Stanley and his five brothers. They're a handsome, well-educated, tight-knit group, all working together to make millions in Colorado's cannabis madness. So how have things changed here? You're looking at new crop. This is a never-ending cycle. 
the Stanleys sell many different kinds of medical marijuana. High THC strains tend to be the money makers, but they're now famous for growing a less profitable plant called Charlotte's Web. It's low in THC, but high in CBD, cannabidiol. Remember that name. It's the key therapeutic chemical doctors are using to treat everything from chronic pain to lupus to Crohn's disease and epilepsy. So 80% 80, 80 of this farm is, is now a, a high CBD, low THC. I mean, this is the exact opposite of what people think of when they think of marijuana. This, this won't get you high. You can set the whole hippie population of Colorado loose on this plant, and uh, you're just going to be looking at a bunch of disappointed hippies. The Stanleys are not concerned about disappointing hippies. They've seen this plant change lives. They have a brand new lab manned with scientists who are turning their plants into medicines. Brother Joel Stanley is in charge of that part of the business. It wasn't a world that I knew, so we, we kind of had to dive into this and learn about how to make plant extracts. Joel was reluctant at first to get involved. He'd avoided marijuana most of his life. But the spring of 2009, he was working in Texas on the oil fields when his oldest brother Josh asked him to join the new family business. And I laughed because I thought it was just a foot in the door to legalization. I didn't think it was medicinal. The first three patients that I met were cancer patients who looked me in the eye and told me that if they didn't have um, the anti-nausea effects and the appetite stimulant and the help sleeping, that they wouldn't have survived chemotherapy, and I believe them. That was sort of your, your time of conversion? That was my turning point. And now on this mountainside, they expect to grow more than 1,000 pounds of medical marijuana in 2014. Some is sold to smoke. Some is sold as an oil or a tincture to ingest. So what we're talking about is literally taking this and turning it into this. That's right. The scientists here, some of whom have worked at major pharmaceutical companies, are focused on both making the medications and maintaining strict quality control. We can test for pesticides, we can test for molds, mildews, we can test for residual solvents. Testing for contamination. It's one of the biggest hurdles to creating a safe product. In fact, recent studies on the contamination of medical marijuana are pretty alarming. One paper in the Journal of Toxicology showed pesticide residue as high as 69% in a batch of medical marijuana. It's one of the things that concerns mainstream doctors about medical marijuana, safety, as well as uniformity and reliability. The major issue that physicians have is in the consistency of the product. How do you know what the person is getting? Um, and the answer is we don't. Neurologist Dr. Edward Ma is the chief of Denver's Health Epilepsy Program. He is one of several mainstream doctors now researching the Stanley's marijuana after hearing about its dramatic results. You know, my ears perked up. I was like, well, maybe this is something that we should be investigating. For years, Dr. Ma steered clear of cannabis because the government classified it as illegal. Yet ironically, when he recently surveyed his own patients, 33% of them were already using medical marijuana. I was just shocked at how many people were actually using it. What did you expect before you got those numbers back? I was guessing maybe 5 10%. And that is part of the problem. Medical marijuana patients have self-medicated for years, anxious to get relief, but with very little guidance on how to do so. That's something that concerns the Wilsons. I don't know if these people in New Jersey know how to grow these types of strains. Yeah, none of the dispensary then, owners are growers. These are just people who had political this, connections this who got the dispensary. And by early October 2013, there was only one dispensary open in the entire state. They don't sell a high CBD strain. The Wilsons believe it could still be at least a year before they will. That's a year Vivian might not have. Every seizure does damage to her brain, to her body, everything. How much longer do we wait? They've got to do something. Not ready to move, they want to still try it. So they're going to leave their familiar neighborhood behind to see firsthand if the marijuana they've heard so much about could help Vivian. Do you think this is going to work? For me, it has to work, because if it doesn't, then I don't know where that leaves us. Just days later, 
Vivian Wilson gets ready for the trip of a lifetime. You're, you're not gonna drive? A trip filled with danger since all the stimulation of a plane ride could induce seizures high up in the sky. Vivian's future and life is on the line. It was a trip that began with a tearful, anxious departure. And fear for Vivian's fragile health. She suffers from life-threatening seizures. So much worry. Yet thankfully, this part of their journey was surprisingly smooth. With her grandmother and father by her side, Vivian was seizure-free. Hey! The long plane ride from New Jersey to Colorado ends with a warm welcome. Hi, Precious. Vivian is finally going to try Beautiful. medical marijuana, Did cannabis, and the Stanley brothers have been working hard to get it ready. Go ahead. But just an hour after her arrival... And pad, Brian? Brian, she's, she's going with her face. Well, she sees him. Bring her over. Vivian starts having seizures, one after the other. Brian rushes to get her anti-seizure medication. It's hard on Vivian and on Brian, and some of his doubts start to rush back in. It's always stressful wherever we go. I have all faith that this is gonna work, but with anything you try, there's always that nagging suspicion that we're gonna be the ones that it doesn't work for. Despite the rough night, the next morning begins with hope that relief is in sight. Here's Vivian. Thank you. To meet the strict state standards, Brian establishes residency in Colorado by renting a small apartment. Vivian meets with two doctors for a thorough physical. How many seizures per day? Both doctors approve her need for cannabis and write recommendations for medical marijuana to treat her epilepsy. And we're good? Yeah. By sunset, they're ready. Little Vivian has no idea what's about to happen. Okay. Hey, Vivi. Ready for your future? Nope. That's it. Right there. A tiny amount of oil squirted into her mouth. Good job, sweetheart. <laughs> now, they just watch and wait. Over the next 24 hours, Vivian's seizures slowly decrease. Look what I got. How's she doing? She's doing really good. To celebrate a family picnic. <laughs> Outside, filled with activity, balloons with patterns, decorations, and lots of sunlight. Any of these things could have previously induced a seizure. It's an emotional moment for a dad, watching his daughter finally have freedom. She used to be able to do this outside, but not. This is what I'm starting on, yeah. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Brian believes the marijuana is working. But as you're about to see, Vivian is by no means cured. <laughs> After an hour in the direct sun, Vivian has a seizure. Brian rushes to inject the potent emergency rescue drugs that will stop the seizures, and then places an oxygen mask in case those same drugs stop Vivian from breathing. She was out in the sun. Yeah, we pushed it. Now with the epilepsy rescue drugs still in her system, you can see for yourself just how powerful they are. She's absolutely doped up right now though. Like, watch her trying to walk, watch her trying to do anything. This is difficult to watch, but it does raise this important point. The traditional drugs used to treat epilepsy can be more dangerous than cannabis. Vivian's doctor, epilepsy expert, Oren Davinsky. I think one of the reasons marijuana is probably safe is, is related to the cannabidiol receptors, which if you have too much stimulation or inhibition of them, they don't shut off breathing or respiration. And that's key. The current potent epilepsy drugs impact many parts of the brain, including the brainstem. They can essentially shut off the body's vital functions if you take too much. Marijuana does not do that. And that's why it's virtually unheard of to have a marijuana overdose. 
It's one of the reasons so many doctors are starting to change their minds on cannabis. But we are talking about children, young children, and that's gonna understandably raise concerns. The latest research shows that some strains of marijuana do have a profound effect on the brains of users under the age of 25. THC in some good studies has been linked to psychiatric disorders, memory disorders in children under age 16. So we'd, even though it's low THC content, it's still THC is more potent than CBD, so there may be long-term side effects. What do you worry about the most in the long run? Uh, the fact that we don't understand the long-term effects of this medication in brain development. These are tough choices, made even tougher when you uproot your whole life for marijuana. I had to do a lot of fundraising and get a lot of friends' help to get us here. So we left daddies at home in Cleveland and Big Sip. They come from all walks of life. A stay-at-home mom from Ohio, an insurance salesman from Alabama, a nurse practitioner from Florida. It's exciting to think about the opportunity for her, I mean, to hold her head up, to be able to look at us and say, Mom and Dad. But now they're trapped. You can't take the medicine back to Florida, can you? They would take my child away. I'm pretty sure that's, that's my fear. Because... They would take your child away for giving him his medicine. Yeah. This is the problem I'm talking about between the federal and the state level. This conflict is really uh, driving families apart. I mean, that, that's just crazy. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I try not to think of it at this point. I'm just trying to, you know, get some, some quick results in Vivian so that we, we, we know uh, this is the path to keep, continue on. And over the next couple of days, they see some startling results. Vivian goes from 75 seizures a day to just 10. The Wilsons are now more convinced than ever. They have to keep Vivian on marijuana. But how? Financially, they aren't ready to move here full time. And yet New Jersey doesn't have the resources to grow what they need. So as they head home, they don't know what the future holds. We're just going to have to hope for the best in the meantime. Their hope could lie with a brand new pharmaceutical. Wow. From these top secret fields overseas. An exclusive look inside when we come back. We're driving deep into the English countryside now, just a couple hours outside of London. We're on our way to visit GW Pharmaceuticals. They're a company that makes medicines from the actual marijuana plant. Now, although this is done with the express permission of the UK government, we did have to sign confidentiality agreements and cannot disclose exactly where we're gonna be located. You see, marijuana is illegal in just about every part of this country, except for the secret labs that we're about to enter. Wow. This is uh, pretty spectacular. Do you used to the smell? I'm not particularly partial to the smell <laughs> very much. If you had smell a vision on your TV, you'd be overpowered by now. It's a lot of pot. This greenhouse is the size of a football field, and they have several more just like it throughout the United Kingdom. The lighting, temperature, humidity, all monitored by a top secret central computer that keeps those conditions constant. And there are dozens of scientists regularly tending the plants. This is probably the most TLC for a weed I've ever heard of. One would hope so, Ab <laughs> absolutely. Dr. Jeffrey Guy, who runs GW Pharmaceuticals, says it has to be this way because they're trying to do something no other pharmaceutical company in the world is attempting, turning the actual marijuana plant into a prescription drug. When you look out at all of this, what comes to your mind? I look at this and I, I think we can make generations of medicines over the next 25 or 30 years. Medicines for illnesses like Alzheimer's, diabetes, PTSD, and epilepsy, and autoimmune diseases like multiple sclerosis and Crohn's. The key to making these medications is inside these simple looking leaves and understanding the hundreds of chemicals, some more therapeutic than others. Those are the cannabinoids. In our preclinical research, we're able to say what each individual cannabinoid does. So that each one represents a potential new medicine for us. We can then breed into the plant the materials that will provide us with a range of 
beneficial effects. Designer cannabis plants are then reduced to a whole plant extract. And that's crucial, according to the granddaddy of all marijuana research, Israel's Dr. Raphael Meshulam. When they've tried to make drugs using certain compounds from marijuana, it's met with limited success. Why is it that when you take just certain compounds out of the marijuana and try and make a drug, it doesn't seem to work as well? Well, one of the reasons possibly is because the THC works better when cannabidiol is there. So if you have both, it works better as a matter of fact. Meshulam calls it the entourage effect, and that's what GW is doing. Every extract will have all the plant's chemicals in it. The extract is then packaged as an approved prescription spray. In order to increase the chances of getting that approval, every step from growing to harvesting to manufacturing is all carefully controlled, regulated, and rigorously tested to strict standards so that every plant, every extract, every dose is identical, safe, and effective. It is an expensive and painstakingly slow process. It has taken hundreds of millions of dollars and a decade to develop their first drug, Sativex, for the unrelenting pain and spasms brought on by multiple sclerosis. Is this a place that you walk? As a neurosurgeon myself, I was curious just how well this medicine could work. Teresa Pointer was diagnosed with MS in February of 2004. For years, she struggled with pain and exhaustion. She tried just about everything, but found the drugs prescribed to her were either ineffective or had awful side effects. Then one day in 2005, she read in the newspaper about clinical trials for a marijuana-based medicine. Have you ever tried cannabis? I mean, what were your thoughts on it? No. No. I mean, ever since I was a little girl, my mum had always said to me, you know, don't, don't do drugs, don't do drugs. But nearly wheelchair-bound, Teresa was desperate. She tried it, a spray to the back of her throat several times a day, even once during our interview. Her pain and muscle spasms are now well controlled. So just the relief to be able to have a couple of sprays before I go to bed and feel comfortable enough to just get to sleep. The risk of side effects are pretty low. Neurologist Dr. Eli Silber prescribes Sativix for some of his patients. Some people do feel slightly dizzy and lightheaded, if you want to call it slightly stoned. Some people might feel slightly tired with it. But according to GW studies, only 6% of patients stopped taking the drug because of the side effects. More than 50% did get relief and continued on the drug. All of that makes it a potentially powerful medicine for the 2.3 million MS sufferers worldwide. It's now available in 25 countries, but not the United States, where it's still under investigation. Why so much more stringent in the United States? I think there is a greater level of rigor at all levels of regulatory inquiry in the U.S. Like any drug in the United States, cannabis would have to go through rigorous testing, research, and approval by the FDA. But after that, things start to get tricky. You see, marijuana also needs the approval of other governmental agencies, like the National Institutes of Health and the Drug Enforcement Administration. This is, of course, difficult, if not impossible. Why? Because in the United States, marijuana is illegal and classified by the government as a Schedule I controlled substance. That means it is considered to be among the most addictive drugs and is not recognized as having any medicinal benefit. And that's why what I'm about to tell you is so ironic. The irony um, is that the federal government has patented one of the, one of the important chemicals in the, uh, in, the, in the plant. The government of the United States yes has a patent on a substance for medicinal purposes at the same time that they say it has no medicinal purpose. Exactly. From Mayo Clinic researcher Dr. Michael Bostwick is talking about United States patent number 6630507. It's held by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services for the exclusive use of cannabinoids for certain treatments. I was stunned, and it really feels to me like a, you know, sort of a dog in the manger that the federal government is, is sitting on this wonderful thing, uh, wonderful thing, um, and not letting anybody else do anything with it. And when we went to the government to ask about it, none of the agencies involved would comment. We're being handcuffed by the government, preventing us from doing the right trials. In fact, a 2013 search through the U.S. National Library of Medicine revealed 2,000 recent papers on marijuana. But the majority of them explored the harm only 6% investigated the benefits. 
Many believe that's the result of a draconian system gone awry, resulting in marijuana becoming one of the country's most controlled substances. And many people believe that has to change. But it was one of the experts calling for that change that surprised me the most, Dr. Nora Volkov. She's the director of the National Institute on Drug Abuse. That's the very agency that many say has blocked a good deal of cannabis research. If the researchers feel that this is an impediment to them doing actually science, scientific work, this is something that should be addressed. On the front lines of that battle, the son of a political dynasty. Coming up, how this anti-drug crusader is fighting to get cannabis drugs to patients like Vivian. Adele, can you put some shoes on? It's early November 2013 at the Wilson home. Vivi. Just a few days earlier, Vivian's parents were surprised by a call from one of the only two dispensaries currently open in the entire state of New Jersey. They say they have a strain of cannabis that is low in psychoactive THC and high in therapeutic CBD. Good morning. After a year of fighting Governor Chris Christie, this is Vivian. And then months searching for doctors to prescribe cannabis. She has seizures, correct? The Wilsons are finally getting marijuana in their hometown. Here. But once they pick up the cannabis at the dispensary, they're confused. It's 0.13% THC and 0.13% CBD. Okay, why don't you go in and ask? This isn't like picking up a standard prescription at the pharmacy. There are no standard doses or federal guidelines. Your CBD is your three point. CBDA. The right, the that's, that's the one that you want. CDB. But they leave uncertain, not knowing exactly what they're getting. And here's another problem. What they get at the dispensary are leaves Vivian can't use. And how many grams did we say we were going to do? Half ounce. It's up to her parents to make medicine out of those leaves. For that, they're using this glorified crock pot to activate the plant and turn it into an oil. So once we have oil, we, we, we still don't know exactly what the ratio is because it's not going to be exactly what this says because it just went through this heating process. It's trial and error. Something we heard from so many medical marijuana patients. Is what matches. I do a mixture of THC, CBN, and CBD. It's not a great god. Frank Bianco had to experiment with many different strains of marijuana to find the right kind to treat his chronic pain and arthritis from an old football injury. If I'm experiencing extreme pain in my knee and I want to get medicated faster, I'll do a dab of hash oil. My body's exhausted, my knee's going to be sore, maybe a little swelling on the joint, maybe I'll sit down and smoke some flour. Prescribed painkillers had made him sick, so he was desperate and willing to try something new. Literally within 15, 20 seconds, um, the pain just went away. It was gone, absolutely exited the body. Turns out the most common use for medical marijuana is pain. Early studies suggest that cannabis binds to receptors in the brain and the body to reduce inflammation and provide a buffer against pain. Yet according to Stanford-trained Dr. Margaret Getty, there is no one set standard cannabis treatment for pain. So patients are kind of let loose in the sense that they have to try things and find out which strain works and it might be different at different times. Frank now works in the Stanley's lab where he helps to make the medicines that he takes morning, noon and night. A variety of different strains. He says his pain is gone and he functions well. It's a mix that works for him. Is it risky to be doing the trial and error process? There are some risks. If you don't know your, your baseline for what milligram, your edibles that, that you can ingest, uh, if you ingest too much, I mean, you could, like, pass out. Some of the stories I've heard have been people who followed recipes, and I've had children admitted to psychiatric emergency rooms um, psychotic from the marijuana product. I'm good. How are you? And that is why Davinsky feels that job number one is to make medical marijuana safe reliable and effective. One way to do that is through research, which is why since the summer of 2013, he's been trying to begin the first ever United States research trial on GW's new cannabis-based epilepsy drug. But the hurdles have been nearly insurmountable. If you're trying to look at the potential medicinal benefits, it's very hard to get funding. 
After many months, Davinsky was able to secure funding and approval from his hospital, New York University. But getting the government, specifically the FDA, the DEA, and the Bureau of Narcotic Enforcement to sign off was nearly impossible. One of their biggest issues was security. So as part of this, you had to have a safe put in. This is new and, and only for this project. A 1,200-pound safe watched by multiple security cameras and alarm systems, all for a drug so low in THC that it can't get you high. And even with that, Davinsky is still waiting for final federal approval. The failure of the federal government through its regulatory arms, DEA, FDA, and the like, has led to a public health debacle. Patrick Kennedy, with his deep political connections and famous name, is pushing the feds to fast-track cannabis research. They ought to get at it quickly. The That's F my view. The FDA, FDA. And the federal government, they ought to just get it done. We just need a greater urgency uh, to this issue overall. Signature it's a bold statement for Kennedy, a recovering addict who's been outspoken that making medical marijuana legal in any way is dangerous, that more children will be able to access it and more smokers will become addicted to it. Now he thinks the only way to remove that risk is to have all medicinal marijuana products federally regulated, rigorously studied, and strictly controlled. I think making this truly a medicine, as opposed to forcing people to go on the street and try to buy something that they can't determine whether it is what it says it is. But he understands why extremely sick patients want marijuana now. Remember his father, Ted Kennedy, died of brain cancer, and his brother lost his leg to cancer. I wouldn't have begrudged any member of my family with cancer, and they've all had cancer, anything that would have mitigated the chemotherapy. It's why Kennedy is meeting with everyone from the FDA to the White House to speed things up. But it takes time. Windsor Green? Time the Wilsons don't have. They're finally going to try their new homemade cannabis oil. We weren't able to get it tested or anything, so we really still have no idea what it is. Um, which is why we have to be really cautious. Behind closed doors, Brian tries it to make sure he doesn't get high. He doesn't. Open up. So Vivian is next. It doesn't work. Nothing in New Jersey seems to work for them. Vivian's seizures won't stop. Is moving the only option left for the Wilsons? Wilson's optimism is fading as fast as the falling February rain. They've rented their house, packed up their lives, finally headed to Colorado. We figured there'd be a way to make it work. It's crazy. It's just yeah. crazy <laughs> that the program is such a failure. All right. That's Vivian's nurse Excuse screaming me. for help. Vivian is having a bad seizure. She's got now these welts. She's having afternoon seizures. Mm -hmm. Something's not right. There would be one of Vivian's last seizures in this home. Soon after, a house once filled with life is empty. All right. The Wilsons are leaving everything behind. Bye, Isla Snowman. <laughs> <laughs> When you look at some of these situations, uh, families uprooting their lives, moving to Colorado, what goes through your mind, somewhat as a doctor, but just as a citizen? I think it's a, a strange point we have. I think that these people can't get access for the most severe cases to something that might be very helpful for their child, might even be potentially life-saving for their child. Something Davinsky's hoping to change. He's finally gotten the government green light to start research trials on GW Pharmaceuticals' cannabis-based epilepsy drug. It's too late for Vivian, but not for the hundreds of children in the trials. It is exciting to be at this point in medicine where, you know, we're going to hopefully in the near future get some answers about a drug that's been part of our species history for thousands of years. But those answers won't come immediately. In the meantime, the Stanleys aren't slowing down. Oh, it looks really good. 
they finally succeeded in getting Charlotte's Web out of Colorado and into the hands of patients in California. Jamie, you got your medicine. Yeah. How about splitting families up? Now the brothers have their sights set nationally in states like Oklahoma. Don't make them pick up and have to move to a state like Colorado. In fact, 15 more states are now considering legalizing medical marijuana. There are the people in this room who need the immediate gratification of that drug. The ever-growing support of mainstream medicine doesn't hurt. In a recent poll of nearly 2,000 doctors, 76% said they're in favor of using medical marijuana for a needy patient. Now six medical marijuana states have expanded their laws to allow card-carrying medical marijuana patients to bring cannabis medicine into their home state. Yet unfortunately for the Wilsons, New Jersey is not one of them. It will not happen on my watch ever. I am done expanding the medical marijuana program. Literally the same hour he said that, our friend's daughter was taken off a ventilator after a 26-hour seizure. 15 months old. <sighs> I heard that. And you're like, yeah, that, that could be Vivian, you know? Tuesday, February 25th, Denver, Colorado. Brian is setting up house, unpacking boxes, picking up a two-month supply of Vivian's new cannabis medicine. Be 667 for the total. Everything's in place when Vivian, Megan, and Adele arrive a few days later. Say hi. I didn't oh, it was After awesome. settling in... Vivian's ready for her first dose. So this is it, huh? Yep. It's been a, uh, a long road. Yeah, it really to has. Get that in your hand like this. <laughs> it really has. She's a little tired, but ready. Can you take some medicine? It's it. Oh. The first of many doses, the beginning of a new life. You okay? I'm so happy with this neighborhood, and I needed something to make this really positive. I needed to be somewhere that I was going to just absolutely love. And create new memories. Yet there is always the constant reminder of everything they left behind. We're stuck here. Vivian, Vivian can't leave this state as things stand now. Right. She can't, she can't cross any borders. Um, and they're just not going to, you know, the grandparents are gonna get, aren't going to get to see their grandchildren much. Um, and it's, it's really sad. In the midst of the sadness, a realization that the sacrifice might have meaning. Was this a battle that was won? Clearly, we're here now. Vivian does not have what she needs in New Jersey, so in that respect, we didn't win, but there's a conversation going on, and people are talking about medical marijuana a lot more. How great! And for the Wilsons, other patients and dedicated scientists, all who believe this plant might be able to change lives... Vivian, it's our new house! That is a victory.